Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. So I was originally planning to make a completely different video for this week's Thursday upload, but I may have fallen down a bit of a rabbit hole yesterday and I decided to completely change direction at the very last minute. So apologies if this video isn't as polished or as well edited as my usual content. Not to say that my recent videos have been groundbreaking cinema or anything, I just really wanted to talk about this particular topic in this particular video. Also, for those of you who keep complaining that my ring light keeps reflecting off my glasses, and it makes these videos really difficult to watch, I have a very limited space in which to record these videos, so the ring light has to be placed exactly where it is right now, and if I want to read all of the detailed notes that I put lots of time and effort and research into to make these videos as good as possible for you guys, I need to wear my glasses, otherwise I can't see what I've written. Is that good enough for you? Will you stop complaining about it now? No? Probably not? Well, I mean, I guess I tried my best. I we'll have to agree to disagree, right? Anyways, let's move on. Several months ago, some of you may remember that I made a pair of videos discussing why the KHL and Russian hockey as a whole were an absolute mess as a result of the country's invasion of Ukraine. In those videos, I mentioned how many import players from Central Europe, Scandinavia and North America had terminated their contracts with their respective KHL teams just days before the Gagarin Cup playoffs, and how it was possible that the few remaining foreign players still in the league and any potential newcomers could choose to take their talents elsewhere if the situation didn't improve by the offseason. And that's not even mentioning the two different KHL franchises that completely withdrew from the league during this span. Well, now that the playoffs are officially over and the KHL free agency period is in full swing, these predictions that I made have proven to be true and then some, as the league is struggling to retain even a fraction of their foreign player base nearly three weeks into the offseason. So how bad have things gotten, how many import players have left the league, and what's the likelihood of any new players joining for this season? Well, let's take a look at the entire situation in a little more detail and try to figure it out, shall we? So in today's video, join me as we explore why the Continental Hockey League is in serious trouble. Now I want to start by looking at the typical number of import players that the KHL features during a normal season of play, and to do that, let's take a look at how many foreign players have competed in the league in each of the last five years. Just to let you know though, I am not including any players from Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan, or who were deemed dual nationals of any of these countries, and I am instead focusing on the players who are from Central Europe, Scandinavia and North America. The reason I am doing this now, and will continue to do so over the course of the entire video, is because Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan each have at least one KHL franchise operating within their respective nations, and their countrymen make up some of, if not the biggest contingent of players in the league, especially for their own domestic teams. For example, there's lots of Kazakhstan players on the Kazakhstan team and lots of Belarusian players on the Belarusian team. Does that make sense to you? I really hope so because I'm going to be doing it like this anyway. So the 2017-18 KHL season, the furthest we're going to go back half a decade, saw 244 players take part in the KHL from 13 different countries within Central Europe, Scandinavia and North America. Now the 18-19 KHL season just a year later saw 242 different players from these regions but from only 12 different countries. So two less players and two less countries, but nothing really different compared to those two years. Now the 2019-20 season, the middle season of these five, had 220 players from these regions, but still from 12 different countries. So there were the same amount of countries compared to the year prior, just 22 less players compared to the prior season. Now the 2020-21 season, two years ago, saw 222 players from these regions, but only from 11 different countries. So one less country Country, but two more players compared to the year prior, and then the recent 21-22 KHL season, the year that saw all of this upset midway through the year, had 211 different players from Central Europe, Scandinavia and North America, and 12 countries within those regions. So there was one more country represented that year, but 11 less players compared to the 2021 season. So based on these results, there is typically over 200 players from roughly 12 different countries within Central Europe, Scandinavia, 
Scandinavia and North America that compete in the KHL every single season. Now having personally looked at all 22 teams that are confirmed to be competing in the upcoming 22-23 KHL season, and having delved deeper into each of their current rosters at the time of this recording, can you guess how many import players are signed to a KHL roster after the first three weeks of free agency? Come on, there's got to be plenty of them, right? There was 211 last year, and of course there's been the current situation going on, so there's going to be less most likely. How about like 100 or 150, right? Something like that, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, there are six. Six players, folks. Only six players from Central Europe, Scandinavia, or North America that are signed to the KHL next season at this point in time, three weeks into free agency. Only half a dozen players who aren't born in Russia, Belarus, or Kazakhstan, or are considered a dual national of either of these nations, are currently signed in the league for the upcoming season. There were 211 last season. Can you see why this is a bit of a problem? Yeah, it's a bit of a problem, you know. Now, it is worth mentioning that there are a number of foreign players, including some of the top performers in the league last season, who have yet to reveal their plans for the upcoming year of play. So it is likely that the number of foreign-born players from these three different regions will likely increase before the off-season is over and the 22-23 season finally gets underway. That said, Given that the KHL rulebook allows each team to ice five foreign players every single game, and given that there are currently only half a dozen foreign players that are signed across all 22 teams, I don't think import limits will be that much of an issue this year, do you? After all, it's not as if players are lining up to join the league, given everything that's going on in Russia at the moment, are they? Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking, but odd man Rush, if there were 211 players last season and only six of them are signed for next year, what's happened to the other 205 players? Surely they aren't all leaving the league, right? Well, it's likely that one of five outcomes has occurred for each of these players. Either, number one, they have yet to make a decision on next year, as I previously mentioned earlier. Number two, their team has withdrawn from the league completely, and each of the players on the roster haven't signed with another KHL team. Number three, they made a brief appearance in the K at some point last season, before moving on elsewhere in the hockey world. Number four, their current contract has expired, and they have chosen to sign elsewhere in Europe, or number five, they have terminated their deal in the KHL and they have pursued another opportunity elsewhere in the hockey world. For example, Finnish side Jokerit and Latvian side Dinamo Riga housed 67 different players between them over the course of last season before their respective withdrawals from the league, while approximately 16 different foreign players terminated their contracts with their respective teams before the 2022 Gagarin Cup playoffs got underway. That's nearly 40% of the league's entire foreign player base gone in an instant before the postseason even began, folks. While this total still leaves roughly 128 foreign players unaccounted for, a notable number of these remaining players have decided to leave the league behind since the start of the KHL's free agency period on May 1st. In fact, of the 22 different players who are from Central Europe, Scandinavia or North America, and whose transfers have been confirmed by elite prospects since April 30th, 2022, 19 of them have either terminated their existing contracts in the KHL or have signed with a different team elsewhere in Europe. Only three foreign-born players who don't hail from Russia or one of its allying countries have chosen to stick around in the league for the upcoming season of play. If that doesn't show you just how sceptical many foreign-born players are to join or even return to the KHL next season, I don't know what does, folks. And who are some of the more notable names that have left the league via free agency? Well, we have Lars Johansson, who will probably end up being the KHL's goaltender of the year this last season, and helped SKA go on an incredible run in the postseason, but he's decided to head home to Sweden and sign with Fulunder HC. He could have stuck around and been a fantastic goaltender in the KHL, but the current situation has made him want to leave elsewhere. Oh, but not just him, what about Ryan Spooner? He spent the last few seasons in the KHL following the end of his NHL career, where he played for three different teams in one season, and he's actually been a really productive player in the K during his career, but he's no longer playing for Avto Mobilist, and it's currently unknown what his plans are for next season. But by the looks of it, he definitely isn't coming back to the KHL. 
Oh, but not just Spooner, what about fellow teammates Leo Komarov and Miko Lettinen, who both signed four-year contracts with SKA St. Petersburg midway through this season, but they have both decided that it's not worth sticking around and have terminated their respective deals with the organisation, and Lettinen has decided to move to the Swiss League Zurich Lions, while Komarov hasn't made a decision on what he's doing next. You can really tell that things are kind of rough at the moment, given that both of these guys were secured some decent money for the next four years, and they decided to bolt at the first opportunity. Oh, and not just those two, what about Eric Fair and Jason Demers? Those two signed with Akbar's Kazan midway through the season, though not to four-year contracts like Komarov and Lettinen, and while each of their next destinations are currently unknown, and both of them are heading towards the twilight years of their career, it's been confirmed that neither of them are returning to Kazan's roster for next season. So, if they're not returning to Kazan, and Kazan did pretty well this season, I find it highly unlikely that they're returning to the KHL, and to be honest, it sounds like the right decision for them. Oh, and not just that pair, what about Oscar Lindbergh and Rob Klinkhammer too? Both of these players have spent several years in the KHL now, and they've each produced impressive tenures in the league, Klinkhammer's being notably longer than Lindbergh's is of course, but while each of their plans for next year are still currently unknown, like Fair and Demers before them, neither of them seem to be returning to the K anytime soon either. So just like that, you have four different players whose futures are pretty much unknown, but all we know is they don't want to return to the KHL. Penultimately, what about Lucas Walmark? He was featured in my 10 former NHLers to debut in the KHL video this season, and while he played pretty well during his time with CSKA Moscow, he's decided to bolt from the league just like everyone else, as he's joined the Zurich Lions for next season. And finally, how about Klaas Dolbeck? He spent the last four seasons, nearly half a decade, plying his trade in the KHL, but even he's decided that the current situation is enough, so he's gone and joined Swiss side HC Davos. So not only are the KHL losing a huge number of foreign import players, they are also losing many of their best foreign import players too. For a league that's regarded by many as the second highest level of competition across the entire hockey world, it's going to be really tough for them to keep that reputation after such a mass exodus of players like this, you know. Now if the sizeable number of confirmed departures isn't bad enough though, there are also six more foreign players that are rumoured to be leaving the league, but haven't yet been confirmed at the time of this recording, including former NHL as Stephen Kampfer and Tim Heed, as well as Finnish netminder Juha Metzler, who in fact was one of the three players that was confirmed to have remained in the league that we mentioned earlier, and has since been involved in two separate rumours, only weeks after signing with Avto Moblist Yekaterinburg. This means that there could be up to 25 more players that have left the KHL behind since May 1st, and if you add this total to the 84 players that we previously mentioned, that's nearly 120 and 10 different players that have left the KHL behind in the span of just a few months. That's not great, is it? While many people are commending these players for leaving the KHL behind and are celebrating that Russia is finally getting what it deserves, and understandably so, it's possible that this growing divide between East and West could cause some pretty major issues within the hockey world that might linger for many years to come. Don't get me wrong folks, I completely agree that the players should leave Russia behind and pursue other opportunities elsewhere in the hockey world, as I probably would have done the exact same thing if I were in their position. But there's a real danger that Russian, Belarusian and Kazakhstan players feel so excluded by the global hockey community and suffer severe punishments to their hockey program due to actions far beyond their control that they continue to withdraw deeper into their own domestic systems and they isolate themselves even further from the rest of the sport. Let's not forget that only 30 years ago, Russian-born hockey players weren't even allowed to compete outside of the Soviet Union and were forced to risk their lives by defecting from the country just to gain the ability to choose their future. And while we are a long way from this situation returning, and while this is very much a worst case scenario, what do you think is going to happen if these players are constantly rejected by the rest of the sport and their countries are the only ones offering them any kind of support? They are going to become fiercely loyal to their own countries as they are the only people that have had their backs during their worst moments and these players will then support their nations just as vehemently as they supported them, which only further exacerbates the problem. Now I'm certainly not implying that Russia should be let off the hook for everything that they've done to Ukraine over the last few months, 
sense, or the response from the hockey community hasn't been justified for the most part, but whether it's the players being punished for actions that they have little to no control over, the rest of the hockey world almost universally denouncing Russian players and the KHL, or the Canadian Hockey League draft refusing to allow Russian and Belarusian players to take part, if these skaters continue to suffer consequences for the actions of their government that let's be honest folks, they probably don't have much say in anyway, don't be surprised if these players want nothing to do with the wider hockey world and they instead decide to play their entire careers back home. I mean, think of all the great Russian hockey players that have suited up in the NHL over the years. You can't deny that the league would be significantly worse off if Russian players no longer competed in the show. Would the NHL be just fine without them? Absolutely, of course they would, it's the NHL. But if you're missing guys like Alexandro Vechkin and Andre Vasilevsky, it's going to be really disappointing and some of the best players that the game has ever seen would no longer be playing in the best league in the world. And politics or not, I think that would be a real shame. Do I agree with every single sanction that has been placed on these players by the wider hockey community? No. No I don't actually. Do I have a better solution that is both fair and justified for either side of the argument? Absolutely not, I am far from being an expert on any of this, but I think it's important to remember that many of these players have been caught in the middle of this through no fault of their own, and let's be honest, most of these players didn't want anything like this whole situation to arise, some of them might have wanted it to happen, but let's be clear, they're probably in the minority, and most of these players just wanted to continue playing the game they love, and if the Continental Hockey League is forced to disband as a result of these continued issues and any financial repercussions that may occur, her, there's going to be a whole host of players who will no longer be able to continue their playing careers as a result. Let's not forget that the KHL has had roughly 900 to 1000 different players every season. And I don't know about you, that sounds like a pretty sad situation to me, conflict or not. Whether the overarching situation ends as soon as possible in the most positive outcome available remains to be seen but given that the KHL will likely end up housing just a fraction of its usual import players during the upcoming season of play, things will probably get a whole lot worse before the idea of them getting better is even a legit possibility. In the meantime though, I'll try and do my best to keep tabs on the KHL, and I'll report back with another video if anything significant happens. I mean, I've already made three uploads on the current situation, a fourth one couldn't hurt, right guys? And that was a look at why the Continental Hockey League is in some very serious trouble. What do you guys think about the current situation? Are you surprised that so few import players shall be competing in the league next season, or has the current conflict made this outcome inevitable? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Clayton Hallam, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.